Hey photographers. All right, I want to talk to you today about the gear I use and why. Um, this is the setup that I shoot, I'm gonna guess 70% of my stuff with. Uh, it's definitely the lens camera combo that I shoot the most. Uh, the camera is basically the camera I use all the time. It's the Nikon Z9. And the reason I'm using that is because I've always, for the last, uh, over 10 years now, <clears throat> I've shot Nikon's flagship camera. So I shot a Nikon D3S for a while in DSLR terms, and I shot a D4S after that. And I shot that D4S for I think about six to seven years. Um, I love those cameras for two main reasons. Number one, I like the actual, the big camera, the big uh, form. I like the vertical shutter grip integrated to it, which is nice for when I'm shooting like this. I don't have to do this whole maneuver. I get to actually just comfortably shoot here. And I'm just used to the bigger, bulkier camera. The other nice thing is the batteries on these. If you've never seen the batteries in these bigger cameras, they're gigantic compared to most other smaller DSLRs, which means they last all day. In fact, with DSLRs, they lasted multiple days. And even with this, unless I'm shooting a ton, I can shoot for multiple days on this before I have to bother charging it, which is a wonderful thing. I do have one other camera battery that I barely ever use on this one. So that's just a nice little side benefit. Uh, but the main reason is they're also the highest end cameras that Nikon makes. And it's usually the case with both Sony, Canon, and any other camera brand, right? Their flagship camera bodies are the highest end ones with the most features in them and the best technology in them, okay? And that's what this Nikon Z9 is for me as well. With mirrorless cameras, I had the Nikon Z6 II, I still own it, uh, but that camera, while a great mirrorless camera and actually the best low light camera I've ever seen and ever shot myself, um, it, it struggled with autofocus. Uh, this Nikon Z9 is the best autofocus camera I've ever used uh, from Nikon. I haven't shot any other brands, so I can't really speak to them, but uh, that's what I use and that's why I like this camera is because it really can uh, stick with me, keep up with me, it doesn't slow me down. The one thing I don't particularly like on this one is the high resolution, it's 45 megapixels, something like that. Uh, for my uses and the way I shoot, I don't really need that. It's kind of a waste of megapixels for me and the uses that I have. Some people love it. Uh, I don't mind it. Uh, the only thing is I just think the camera would be a little bit better in low light, although that is a video I'm gonna actually do in the near future and talk about is testing to see that if it is better in low light than the Nikon Z6 II, which is lower megapixels. That's a whole other video. In any case, uh, the lens, 400 to 8. So uh, until I went mirrorless, I shot a Nikon 500 f4. It was a G version. It was an older style thing. It was an old lens. It was heavy. I beat that thing to death, but it kept going, which was wonderful. Um, but yeah, it, it required me pretty much always to shoot on a monopod. I couldn't really comfortably handhold it for more than a real short period of time. Man, those nut hatches are going off. Um, then Nikon came out with this 400 to 8. Uh, this thing is completely hand holdable for me. It's very, very well balanced with the Nikon Z9 on it. Um, I still can't find myself, you know, holding it up here like this for a very long period of time, but I don't find myself in a lot of circumstances where I'm just standing here like this, not moving around, not changing. So uh, for the most part, I love this lens for being hand holdable. And it does have the built in teleconverter on it, which means I can switch it just like that to 560 millimeter f4 lens so the teleconverter is just built into the lens which is a nice thing so that's the lens i shoot the most um, the reason i like this more than the 500 is over time i've shot wider and wider basically so more space in the frame as i'm sure many of you know uh, you've probably subscribed to this very likely because you like the style that i shoot which is a lot of dramatic light but also smaller in frame stuff and i like to include the habitat so more and more I've found over the years that I've enjoyed shorter and shorter focal lengths to allow me to incorporate more of that habitat. So 400 millimeter was a great move and it being a 2.8 lens is nice because it lets me shoot an even lower light uh, or at least in the same light that I used to and keep my ISO lower or my shutter speed higher, which is an advantage. And it is certainly nice to be able to, at a flick of a switch to just go to 560 millimeter F4 and have a longer focal length. Basically, I feel like this lens is like having a 400 2.8 and a 600 f4 in one, right? It's 560 millimeter f4, so it's just shy of 600, but it's close enough. So it's really nice having those two lenses in one. All right, so other than that, the other lens that I've been shooting is the Nikon 100 to 400 millimeter. It's a 4.5 to 5.6. So its uh, aperture is 5.6 when at 400 millimeter and 4.5 it went at uh, 100 millimeter. This also is a Z lens, so a mirrorless lens. So I don't need any adapters or anything like that. 
All right, so the reason I love this lens and I'm shooting this lens a ton is that 100 to 400 range. Um, I was never a zoom shooter. I was always a prime shooter on DSLR terms, but this lens is incredible. It's just sharp throughout the range, relatively fast. It's still a very fast lens, but when you compare it to this, this thing is just faster, uh, which it should be because it costs three to four times as much. But there's something in a zoom range to me that I've realized with this, uh, because I've also shot a 70 to 200 and played around with that. 200 millimeter, in my opinion, when you're starting to try and shoot birds that are a little bit more wider focal length feeling, 200 millimeter still feels sort of telephoto. It sort of looks telephoto in most of those shots to me. When you get below 200, so into that 150 and especially 100 millimeter range, there's something about it that really starts to take on that wide angle feel and lets you really incorporate that habitat. It becomes so immersive and I really, really love that. And so with this lens, you get to have the same focal length as this, 400 millimeter when you zoom out, right? So there we go, 400 millimeter, and then go right in just like that to 100 millimeter and get this completely wide feeling to it. Um, if you didn't watch the lesson on the um, bugs in my face, it's a great lesson, they're everywhere. Now, if you didn't watch the lesson on, oh, come on. <laughs> If you didn't watch the lesson on the rock wrens that I shot in Moab, um, please check that one out. That's certainly a good one where I use this 100 to 400 to really kind of incorporate some habitat and zoom around. And then also the one from Hilton Head in the Marsh with Emily, who is operating the camera right back there right now. Um, she uh, has a great private marsh that she has access to there and she brought me in a few times and I was able to get some really nice wider angle stuff at 100 millimeter with some spoon bills and get a closer look. So in any case, this is a wonderful lens. Uh, it's also a lens I use when I'm gonna be shooting a longer period of time, obviously much lighter. And how cool is this? I mean, there you go, right? That's 400 millimeter, so is that, okay? The difference is 5.6 versus 2.8. So I just simply get two stops of light better with that le big lens versus this one. All right, some other lenses I play with now, uh, 24 to 70, this is an F4 version. It's just nice and lightweight and small. This is also a mirrorless version that I can mount without an adapter. And I absolutely love this because I can really start to do some, some extreme wide angles. Certainly not a bird lens I use very often, but when I have really friendly birds or I'm doing some remote photography, so in other words, setting up the camera and waiting for a bird to land in just the right spot and then triggering it with a remote, that's the lens I'm gonna use for that. And then more recently, the other lens I've been playing with is, is this lens baby 35 millimeter uh, tilt shift lens. So basically, watch this. I can bend the lens around, okay? So I can change the focal plane of this lens just by sort of moving it around like this. And it does actually bend in all directions, as you can see, right? So you've seen some videos um, I shot in Florida with this and I don't know if I did any, I don't think I did any in Hilton Head in the marsh, but I did do uh, the Beach Birds in Florida was shot with this. There were some wood storks. I got some really cool stuff and some ready turnstones. I was actually shooting straight down on with that particular lens and you can play with the focal plane. So I try these weird lenses to get some really different stuff. I have a 500 millimeter mirror lens, which gives me donut bokeh. I play with every so often. And then I also have my underwater housing that lets me put my 300 F4 and 1.4 teleconverter in so I can get 420 millimeter in a waterproof housing that I can take the Z6 II in with uh, for that. So that's another specialized uh, kit that I have. Those kits like this and the underwater rig and the mirror lens, those are all lenses that I use to just try and get different. And that's what I love to do. I love to try and get different and unique, but here's the key. It still has to look good. It still has to look pretty. I can't just use these lenses to make something look completely weird and different and just call it a day. A lot of the times weird and different looks weird and ugly, you know? Um, but uh, that's the main kit that I use and those are the reasons why. Other than that, support wise, I'll use a ground pod. I just throw a gimbal on that. You saw in my, here we go, I got it right here. Uh, I'll basically just uh, take this, this gimbal head off the tripod, put it on here. I use that for when I'm shooting in the marsh and in the beach with like some lower perspective stuff. And then every so often I will incorporate the monopod as well. I use this the most recently when I was doing a bunch of bird in flight stuff. Um, so the spoon bills in flight that you saw me shoot in Florida, that lesson was all shot from the monopod just so I could kind of keep the camera resting there and shoot so I don't have to hold it the whole time. So that's basically what I use. Um, this is the main setup. This is the setup right here that I use almost exclusively or not exclusively, but for the vast majority 
majority of what I shoot just because it is the best that I have. Uh, but the other lenses certainly allow me to get more creative. I would say this is the setup to use for when I'm just doing standard, normal, clean bird photography. But when I get the most creative, it's all the other lenses that I use. And so if you're stuck with just a 100 to 400 or 150 to 600 or something shorter focal length, don't think that's like a detriment. Uh, use it to your advantage, take advantage of it, incorporate the habitat, get creative with it. And I think you'll see based on a lot of the photos that I've shared in these past lessons, they're not all at these extremely long focal lengths. A lot of them are at these mid range to shorter focal lengths, 400 millimeter and less. All right. So thanks again, everybody for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I'll have some more of these lessons coming to you soon.